what about real gases? I made the statement a couple times that most real gases behave pretty much like ideal gases unless they're really big, heavy molecules of some kind. Um, in the actual studies of such things, there are two uh, observations that are worth our attention. And they are, if you take one mole of a real gas, you'd expect uh, an ideal gas, if you pick up one mole uh, of it, then PV over RT would be equal to 1, right? But in a real gas, it can actually be greater than 1 or less than 1. And the kinetic molecular theory explains uh, the deviations, either upwards or downwards. Uh, the case where PV over RT is less than 1 is usually seen in polar molecules. Molecules like the water molecule or light alcohols, uh, ammonia, this kind of thing. And it's believed to be caused by intermolecular attractions. These are polar molecules, so they attract one another. You remember the kinetic molecular theory said that ideal gas molecules, unless they're colliding, don't attract one another, don't have any uh, influence on each other. But real gas molecules could. Here's the scenario. Let's imagine we have a real gas molecule uh, collection here in this piston cylinder arrangement. Let's suppose it's what, ammonia. All right, we put ammonia in there. Ammonia is a polar molecule, not as polar as water, but it's pretty polar. And under ordinary conditions, the ammonia molecules are relatively far apart, so the only time that they would attract one another is when they happen to run into one. Well, um, we, there's not very much we can say about that except that it might affect the overall pressure that we observe under a given set of conditions. But let's, let's make it more um, obvious here. Let's increase the external pressure, push the piston down, and get these molecules close together. Now, I want to tell you that intermolecular attractions are relatively weak forces but they are exerted over short distances when the molecules or the polar things get close together. Uh, so here's how it works. Imagine that we have uh, one of these molecules colliding with a wall. Ordinarily, the violence of the collision would be a function of the mass of the molecule and the speed. Okay, That's its momentum. We could calculate its momentum. And, uh, the violence of this has a role in the pressure, right? Uh, now, if there are around this molecule a bunch of other molecules that attract it, there is some attraction here, then that's going to mean that this molecule, when it finally gets to the wall, is going to be going slower than it would have been if there were no attractions, if there were no polarity, if it were an ideal behaving molecule. So. That would mean that if it, the collision is less violent, the pressure would be smaller than we would expect otherwise for a given volume and a given temperature. So PV over RT then, at a given temperature and a given volume, would be less than 1 because P is smaller than we would expect due to the influence of these intermolecular um, attractions here. Uh, questions on that? Now the deviations that we see are greatest for high pressure and low temperature. And the reason for that, according to the kinetic molecular theory, is under these conditions, the molecules on the average would be clo closer together and they would be going low temperature on the average slower. Both of those things would favor the effect of the attractions. What about the other side of this? What about when PV over RT is greater than 1. If we have some molecules over here, and let's suppose they are not small molecules. Let's make them big molecules. Let's say this is ethane or propane, something like that. Relatively large molecules. Now, real gas molecules begin to have finite volumes compared to H2 or N2 or O2. They take up more space. 
Now, when we do gas law calculations, we assume that the volume of the gas is equal to the volume of what? Its container, because the gas fills a container. Now, that volume that we need in the calculations is supposed to be what they call the free volume, the volume that's available to the gas. Remember that. Uh, ordinarily, we assume that the free volume is about equal to the container volume, and we can measure the container volume, so we'll use that as a volume in PV equals nRT. Right? Now, as the pressure increases and the volume decreases, eventually we get to some place where these molecules, taken together, occupy a significant fraction of the, the available volume. Right? A significant fraction of it, rather than a negligible amount. So at high pressure, the free volume is smaller than the container volume because of how much space is taken up with all these molecules, these big molecules. So using the container volume makes PV over RT too high because the container volume is actually larger than the real free volume that's available. When you subtract the container volume, uh, you take the container volume and subtract the volume of the molecules. You may think that the volume of molecules is too small for that to be an important factor. But if there are big molecules, and there are lots of them, high pressure here, then it can be a difference. So that would make PV over RT greater than 1 at a given pressure and uh, at a given volume and temperature. 